Welcome to historic Oakwood Cemetery in Syracuse, New York. Oakwood was established in 1859 as part of the rural cemetery movement. It was planned and landscaped as a park-like setting where city residents could escape the dirt and dust of downtown streets. There are 159 acres with 60,000 burials. You can see our starting point for this tour just ahead, the Mortuary Chapel. The chapel was built in 1879. It was designed by noted architect Joseph Lyman Silsby. Well, it's time to start our tour. Today we're going to visit three Civil War veterans out of almost 800 buried in Oakwood Cemetery. They have some interesting stories to share. Let's get started. Our first visit today is with John Forey. And he was born in 1844 in Bennington, Vermont. When he was 10 years old, his family moved to Syracuse, a place he described as a large, uncared for mud hole. The family eventually moved to Ilion, where he worked at the Remington Arms Factory. When the Civil War started, his family moved to Watertown. In 1862, at age 18, he enlisted in Company K of the 10th New York Heavy Artillery. He may have seen an advertisement in the Watertown newspaper that looked something like this. Or he may have seen a recruiting poster similar to this one. Notice $552 bounty. That's equal to over $14,000 in today's money. From March of 1863 to July 1864, the 10th Heavy Artillery was stationed at the defenses of Washington, D.C. The red arrow indicates the location of Fort Ricketts. It was there that John was involved in the Strawberry Shortcake Incident. Now, his unit occupied Fort Ricketts on the eastern side of the Potomac River in the state of Maryland. And one day he was out for a walk and he ran into a fellow out picking strawberries. Well, they got to talking and found out both of their names were John. And John Forey was invited home with his new friend because his friend's mother was going to make strawberry shortcake. So they went to his friend's house, which was located in a tavern his mother ran in the hamlet of Surrattsville. And sure enough, John's mother made the strawberry shortcake. John Forey even visited the family a couple of other times. He thought them very hospitable. We know now that his friend's name was John Surratt, and his mother was none other than Mary Surratt. The Surratts were implicated in the assassination of President Lincoln in April of 1865. John Surratt's picture appears in the upper left-hand corner of that famous wanted poster. John Forey was also very proud of the fact that he had once met President Lincoln and had talked to him for a full 45 minutes. He had gone to the White House to advocate for a fellow soldier unjustly accused of desertion. The young man had been convicted and sentenced to death. John was able to get President Lincoln to pardon the soldier. After the war, John Forey was very active with the Grand Army of the Republic, the Veterans Fraternal Organization. In fact, he was commander of the Root Post in Syracuse for four terms. On the 18th of November, 1922, John Forey passed away at the age of 77. He's buried in Section 12 with his wife, Renette Rust Forey. Our next visit will be with William Widrick, and he has quite a story to tell. He was born in Frankfort, over in Herkimer County. His father, Garrett Widrick, was a fairly prosperous farmer. When the Civil War broke out, William was told to stay home and help on the farm. Six of his relatives had already gone off to war. 
Finally, in February of 1864, William ran away from home and enlisted in Company I of the 2nd New York Heavy Artillery. Already in that regiment were two Widricks, George and Valentine, probably related to William. The unit saw action at Spotsylvania Courthouse, Cold Harbor, and the assault on Petersburg. Well, the assault had barely begun on June 16, 1864, when William was wounded. He lost the index finger on his left hand and was knocked unconscious. In January of 1865, he transferred to the 18th Regiment of the Veteran Reserve Corps and was stationed in Washington, D.C. A couple of months passed, and he was still in Washington. In fact, on the evening of April 14th, he and a friend from Syracuse, Frank England, were attending the theater, Ford's Theater. William, Frank, and some other soldiers were in the balcony seats where they had a direct view into the presidential box. They were enjoying the play Our American Cousin when John Wilkes Booth mortally wounded President Lincoln. They heard the shot, saw the flash and the smoke. They saw the president reach for the back of his head. Booth leapt from the balcony, catching his spur on the bunting and breaking his leg. As he landed, they heard him utter, Sic Semper Tyrannus, as he limped off the stage. The manhunt was on for Booth and the other conspirators. Although Booth died at the Garrett Farm in Virginia, others were soon captured and put on trial. The conspirators were sentenced to hang, and William Widrick's unit was assigned guard duty at the execution of four of the conspirators at the old Arsenal Penitentiary, now Fort McNair. The date was July 7, 1865. The temperature was near 100 degrees. And William saw the gallows sprung. He had witnessed not only the assassination of the president, but the execution of Mary Surratt, Louis Payne, David Harold, and George Azarot. William Widrick lived out the last 10 years of his life in Syracuse. He died in 1932. He's buried in Oakwood Cemetery on a hillside with his comrades in Section 47, overlooking the GAR plot in Section 56. William Widrick at this time does not have a headstone. The next soldier we're going to visit is William Widrick's friend, Francis A. England. Frank England was born on March 7, 1845, in Utica, one of six children. His father was a shoemaker, and when he was old enough, Frank also took up shoemaking. He had a childhood sweetheart named Josephine Stillman, whom he would marry in 1867. On September 1, 1862, Frank and his brother Robert enlisted in Company K of the 146 New York State Volunteers. The brothers are both listed as 18 years old, so they may have been twins. That's Frank pictured on the left, and on the right is a color version of what the Zouave uniforms look like. Zouave uniforms were based on the uniforms of the French light infantry serving in North Africa. They became very popular in the American Civil War. About 70 regiments wore some version of a Zouave uniform. Typical of the uniform was a short open front jacket, baggy trousers, and a sash. The headgear was typically a fez. They wore white leggings. The colors varied from regiment to regiment. The uniform of the 146 was of a light blue wool material. Frank's regiment, known as Garrard's Tigers, fought at the battles of Chancellorsville and Fredericksburg. On July 2, 1863, the 146th Regiment arrived at Gettysburg to a battle begun the day before. They were placed in reserve in the rear of Little Round Top, but that afternoon were ordered forward. 
they took their position in front of Little Round Top. On this map of Gettysburg, you can see the 146th Regiment circled in orange in the blue Union line. They had no sooner gotten into position when a sharpshooter from across Plum Run, probably on Hauk's Ridge, fired, hitting Robert in the neck. He died in Frank's arms. After the battle ended, the Union dead were buried on the field, including Robert. It wasn't until three weeks later that Frank's father came to the battlefield to retrieve his son's body. Robert was laid to rest in Forest Hill Cemetery in Utica. This is his headstone. It was later in 1863 that illness began to overtake Frank, as it did so many soldiers. He came down with typhoid fever. From the end of 1863 to April of 1865, he was absent from his regiment. On April 1, 1865, Frank was transferred to the 18th Regiment of the Veteran Reserve Corps. This is how he came to be in Washington, D.C., a swampy and mosquito-infested city. On the evening of April 14th, he and his friend William Widrick attended Ford's Theater together, and there they witnessed the assassination of President Lincoln. During Lincoln's funeral ceremonies held in the Capitol, Frank England was assigned to the Honor Guard. He was also supposed to be on the funeral train, but he was too ill and couldn't go. One of his proudest possessions was a piece of fringe that a friend gave him from Lincoln's casket. The war ended and Frank returned to Utica. In the early 1870s, he and Josephine moved to Syracuse. He was a shoemaker for a time and then took a job as a commercial traveler a traveling salesman for the Krauss Grocery Company. In April of 1925, Josephine died, and just 23 days later, Frank passed away. The pallbearers at his funeral were all veterans of the Spanish-American War. He and Josephine are buried together in Section 36, Lot 134. That's all we have time for today, but we'll be back to hear more stories from the Civil War veterans. Well, until then, the Sentinel will keep watch over them. This tour was presented by the Historic Oakwood Cemetery Preservation Association. Visit our website at hakfa.org. Thank you, and do come again.